yes, we're going to be in Acts 2, 42 to 47, if you want to follow along. Um, but I feel a bit flustered because I feel like God was talking to me just a minute ago whilst we were worshipping and praying. And so I feel like I'm going to go off my notes slightly already, which is a bit worrying. Um, <laughs> but Oh, look, I've started my timer. That's how worried I am. Um, so I, I feel like just before we get into it, that just even as we we're praying together, that God was saying this is a time to he's calling us to regroup to focus and to choose in and so it was just to to kind of bear that in mind today just as we go through these verses that this is a time for us to regroup as church there's so much other stuff going on and we can easily feel fragmented but it feels like a time to regroup and to focus and to choose in um so i'm going to read the verses starting in verse 42 um it says and they devoted themselves to the apostles teaching and the fellowship to the breaking of bread and the prayers and all came upon every soul and many wonders and signs were being done through the apostles and all who believed were together and had all things in common and they were selling their possessions and belongings and distributing the proceeds to all as any had need and day by day attending the temple together and breaking bread in their homes, they received their food with glad and generous hearts, praising God and having favour with all the people. And the Lord added to their number day by day those who were being saved. And Lord Jesus, we just want to pray this morning that as we go through these verses, that we would hear what you would say to us this morning, that, that we would hear what you want to call us to as a as a people group as a family lord that you would speak truth right into the hearts of each and every one of us in jesus name amen so um i have come to these verses so many times over the years um right from the beginning when i became a christian and decided i probably wasn't going to go to church because i didn't really want to um hang around with other christians and i didn't really like the idea of church and um God set me straight on that quite quickly and so then I did end up going to church quite quickly but since then it's always been um, I think I've always had a heart for what is church and and what we have established here in the west um, of the world is that what the bible says about church and so this is a natural place to end up for that all the time just seeking what does the early church look like and this is very much a picture of um, the heart and life of the early church and so because of that it's a picture for us today of church um, and so it's it, it has four main areas that it talks about and then goes into more depth and we're going to look at, at those four areas today that in their pursuit of God that they devoted themselves to the apostles teaching fellowship the breaking of bread and prayers so talking first about the teaching of the apostles, the teaching of the word of God and how central that is to, to church life and to our lives, that, that actually at the very heart of who we are is that we are people that, that get into the word of God, that seek to understand the scriptures, that, that, that are devoted to the teaching of of the those that lead us in the church that the teaching of Jesus and that actually it says further down that that teaching was accompanied by signs and wonders and again just preparing for today that really stood out to me because we should expect our teaching our proclaiming of the word of God to be accompanied by signs and wonders that's not a thing for then but not now and it's not that back then, you know, they were devoted to this teaching and it was a bit dry and a bit, no, it was full of life because actually it was accompanied by um, the sick being healed and those who were bound up being set free. That actually in these days, we should expect um, the apostles uh, teaching to be accompanied by signs and wonders. And that is something massively on my heart that as a, that as a church family, we would expect to see more in terms of signs and wonders we would expect to see more in terms of the kingdom of God breaking out as we get into the scriptures and as we declare 
um, the teachings of Jesus. So that was the first thing that they were devoted to. Um, the second thing was fellowship. And um, I don't know about you, often we, when I think about fellowship, I think about eating together and praying together and hanging out together. But actually eating and praying in this section are mentioned separately. And so what they're talking about in terms of fellowship is much more radical than that. It says they were together, they had all things in common and they sold their possessions so no one was in need. And actually when you read it, there's, there was a kind of, there's a sense of an eagerness to do that. It, it, never, it doesn't come across begrudging. And so these are challenging verses. I mean, they were together all the time. That's a bit challenging if you're a bit introverted like me. Um, and they had all things in common. And again, this is one that I've wrestled with loads over the years because sometimes we can look around church and see people that are so different to us, you know, and, and some of that is cultural. Some of that is back then they, they would have been very community-based and people would have potentially had more similar lives. However, I'm very close to my actual family, um, my wider family, but outside of Clive's dad, none of them are believers. And, and it struck me that we have the most important thing in common. So for all our differences, when we look around the body of Christ, that's, that's the first thing. For all our differences, we have the most important thing in common. And several times over the years, Clive and I have been on holiday and um, met people who are Christians and ended up just having this amazing time, spending time with them and talking to them because we have the most important thing in common. And I, I think that's so important at this time as we're separated by distance, but can be together in these ways to remember that we are a family that God has put together with Jesus at the center of that. And that is more important than anything else that we could have in common. And the second thing actually to go with that is that we become like those we spend time with. And so for good or for bad, I guess, I definitely think I've become more like Clive over the years. I'm not sure whether that definitely affected my sense of humour. And I'm not sure if that's a good thing, but we do become more like the people we spend time with. And so as we spend time with the people of God, encouraging each other and building each other up and pursuing God together we become more like each other and in terms of selling possessions I think that's a hard one that is a hard word for us in our culture of material materialism and individualism that's a hard word but for me it's just so key to the heart of God and us as a people and I think we we need to get hold of that and to get God to do something in our hearts because actually it, it, is it right for us to live in comfort while brothers and sisters are struggling and every time that I've it makes me emotional just to to talk about because every time I think about it and pray about it the answer I come up with every time is no it's not okay for us to live in comfort while others are in need. Um, and that's true across the body, but also out into our communities, that we wouldn't be, be those who say, oh, I'll pray for you while I sit here in my comfort with my lovely possessions and all my stuff, but I'm not willing to, to sacrifice anything to see your circumstances changed. And so I think God was, would challenge our hearts on that because we are to be in the world, but not of the world. And so whatever our culture looks like, whatever um, culture we live in, and as is a materialistic culture, we're to be in it, but not of it. Um, so apostles teaching, fellowship. The third one was that they broke bread together in their homes. Um, and it's a, just a really lovely picture of intimacy. It comes after that they attended the temple together. So that's potentially more of a larger church setting but that they then broke bread together in in each other's homes and and that potentially refers to um communion or just eating together or most likely both that actually that they were together 
and they were sharing that that time and that food together and it says they did it with glad and sincere hearts and again that's just a really nice picture it, it wasn't begrudging it wasn't something they had to do it wasn't something scheduled in the diary it was that they wanted to be together and again reading it, it seems like they did it almost daily again it might be a cultural thing but actually it was the love that they had for each other that they wanted to spend time together in each other's homes, breaking bread together, spending time together, being joyful and glad. And in these days particularly, it's difficult, right? Because we're not able to do that. But I think because it's difficult, it's even more important at the moment that we find those ways to be together. And whether that is breaking bread and sharing a meal over zoom it's the most bizarre thing isn't it whoever thought we'd be doing things like that but but we have this technology that we can do that or whether it's joining a small group because we intentionally want to devote ourselves to fellowship with other believers or whether it's going out for a walk with someone and praying with them um i was out just the other day with jack hodges and we would we, as we were talking and as we prayed, I was just saying, this is church. Actually, for those that are struggling with church right now, just meeting up or talking with one other believer, that's church. We get to do life together. And finally, the final central part was prayer. And considering that everything they did had God at the center of it, it's kind of no surprise that prayer and praise came very naturally to that setting and should do for us as well that actually as we fix our eyes on God that our natural response to all that he does in our lives is that we would pray and praise our God and so when I read these verses I see a radical and authentic group of people pursuing God together and I don't know about you but I want that so much that's amazing to me. And so, so then it made me go, how do we get there? And I think, again, just feeling like God spoke to me in the, in the, prayer, in the prayer and prophetic section before this, I, I felt like he said, our church is a privilege. Our church family is a privilege. Um, and I don't know if you see it like that or if you don't, but I feel like God will get hold of us this morning and say, this is a privilege. Look how uh, I look at my screen and there's four pages of people here gathered together who love Jesus. And so it's time to choose in to what church family is. And so in terms of how we get there, I felt like there was two points to bring. Nige, I, I went off your model of bringing points. I felt like it was a points morning. So the first one is found at the start of verse 42, and it says they devoted themselves. And when you read what devotion means, it's to do with loyalty and love and enthusiasm. They devoted themselves to the apostle te apostles teaching, to fellowship, to breaking bread, to prayer. They devoted themselves to God and to one another. So our first question for ourselves this morning is, are we devoted? Do we live our lives devoting ourselves to God? And do we live our lives devoting ourselves to one another? When Jesus called the disciples, he said, follow me. And it, it was a choice, but it, and it was an active thing. People chose to follow him. And so there is an active part for us to devote ourselves to these areas. And the second thing is found in verse 43, which I this morning I read from the ESV because that I just really love the translation, which says, and awe came upon every soul. And so that was my other question for this morning was, are we in awe of our holy God? Are we in awe and reverent fear of a holy God? Do we recognize our God for who he is, Jesus, who came and dwelt amongst us as a man. Jesus, who willingly went to the cross so that we could be forgiven for our sins and have 
relationship through all eternity with God? Do we really get hold of that in our hearts? Because if we do, then it leads to devotion. And as I was thinking about those two areas, it just led me to um, Matthew verse um, chapter 22, verse 36 to 39, which says, teacher, which is the greatest commandment in the law? Jesus replied, love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind. This is the first and greatest commandment. And the second is like it. Love your neighbor as yourself. And it felt like those two things were exactly what, what creates the fellowship, the family that we have, that we would love our God and see him for who he is and be in awe of him and that we would love the church family around us, that we would devote ourselves to the teachings of Jesus, but also to fellowship together, to love one another and to be devoted. And so it does feel like a time to regroup, to focus and to choose in again. Yeah, Lord Jesus, we just want to thank you that you are a God that calls us into family. Lord, that we're in this together, that you haven't called us to be um, off out on our own. And, and I, Lord, I want to pray for those this morning that feel like that, that those who feel, again, that particularly in these times where we can't physically meet together, who potentially feel isolated and on their own. Lord, would you once again draw us together as family that we would be those that fix our eyes upon you and are awestruck by who you are and all that you've done in our lives lord and that would call us and cause us to devote ourselves to your teachings and to one another that we might devote ourselves to loving one another, seeing that the that we have the most important thing conceivable in common. And that is you, Lord Jesus. So we just pray, Lord, would you stir our hearts this morning for each other? That we might reach out in love across the body and out into our communities, that we might be known for our love. Lord Jesus, and even for those who are struggling, Lord, help, help us to be those that are able to just reach out and say, I'm struggling and I need the love and support of the body. Lord, thank you for what you've called us to and refresh it in us, Lord. Pour your spirit out upon us afresh that we might pursue you and pursue the life that you've laid ahead of us and all that you have for us to do. In Jesus' name, amen.